Native land, vibrant, flourishing, transport, land, sea, air, domestic and international, innovation and telecommunications, growing SMMEs and big business, hospitality, food and beverage and accommodation, travel agents, tour guides and operators, a place of meetings, incentives, conferences, events and exhibitions. We need to unlock our potential. But government cannot deliver the level and pace of social development alone if we aim to win as a nation. Strong public-private partnerships between government and the private sector are the key to the required growth and transformation, particularly in the tourism sector. South Africa is business unusual. Here is a vital hub for an African perspective. Home to 6% of Africa's population, we produce over 18% of the continent's gross domestic product and boast 45% of its mineral production. Tourism is the most important source of income in our developing economy, with the potential for long-lasting empowerment through second economy development. South Africa has a healthy tourism business sector, working in partnership with government, lobbying and driving the sector forward, implementing structures and strategies aimed at unlocking our potential. Key milestones have been the establishment of a dedicated tourism ministry, the conceptualization and implementation of the Tourism BEE Charter in partnership with key stakeholders, the formation of the Tourism Enterprise Partnership to drive SME development in South Africa, and the fostering of strong relations with influential organizations such as the UN World Tourism Organization, RITOSA and the World Travel and Tourism Council, mindful of our role and responsibility as a global player. Come and uncover South Africa, where the opportunities and challenges that face our tourism industry allow us to unlock our true potential of being a top global destination. Joining me now is Matsatsi Ramawela. She's the CEO of the Tourism Business Council of South Africa. Thanks so much for joining us today. Let's get straight into a look at the tourism space right now because in South Africa we don't seem to have the tourism and uh, leisure travel industry being seen as a significant enough revenue contributor to South Africa's fiscus and this despite the, the kind of contribution it's making to that to that coffer. Why do you think that is and to what extent are we seeing shifts in perception? Well first of all thank you very much for the opportunity and we welcome opportunities like this. Uh, as you rightfully said, uh, we, you know, you exploring the reasons why our industry, uh, travel and tourism industry, is not uh, taken seriously because that's 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 how we we see it as an industry. Um, and I think we can attribute to the fact that um, our industry is really very much in. Uh, it touches everybody's uh, lives on a daily basis. And so as a result, we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people uh, don't even know when they're interfacing with, the, with our industry. Uh, every day, you know, if you're going to be taking a flight to go to a meeting somewhere in Devon, if you're going to be going to have a conference, you are, you are interfacing with our industry. If you're involved in catering, you are in interfacing with our industry. Mm -hmm. But people tend to look at uh, things like, uh, you know, going to stay in a hotel, they think, oh yeah, now you are in the travel and tourism industry. And that's what the difficulty is. But also, we as an industry, really the private sector side, we haven't really, over the years, taken the challenge or have taken seriously the responsibility of having to reach out to society. And this is not unique to South Africa. It's a global issue uh, where even the likes of the UNWTO and the World Travel and Tourism Council have identified that there's a need for industry to consciously get out and reach out to society and educate them about the seriousness of our, of our industry. So let's look at the potential here because I came across a stat that tourism contributes greater employment numbers to the economy than the gold mining industry. And I 
know that you've said before that we're looking at a possibly uh, a new gold industry emerging here. So where investment into the sector is based on the kind of returns that are said to be reaped at the end of the day, what potential are we looking at when it comes to this sector as a revenue earner for South Africa? Let me put it this way. Uh, globally, uh, travel and tourism is the third biggest sector after the mining, uh, sorry, after the, the uh, automotive mm -hmm. and uh, financial services. So we're actually a real big deal. Uh, last year, uh, at the close of 2012 in December, we celebrated the, uh, the, the one billionth tourists traveling the world. And so we are, as an industry globally, we are at the second phase where we're looking to get uh, one billion plus people to begin to travel. You know, which means we are an entrenched industry. There's a whole lot more people who, uh, you know, cannot displace uh, or replace their ability to travel with something else. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about the, the 18 ports in South Africa, let me just quote you some figures, uh, which comes from the, the global, uh, the Travel and Tourism um, Council. Tourism uh, total contribution to GDP in South Africa, I'm not talking globally, uh, it's sitting at 9.8%. That's the contribution of, of tourism. And over the years, we've always talked about 7% to 8%. So we are indeed a growing sector, now sitting at a total contribution of 9.8%. And if you look at the direct, what is our direct contribution to GDP? Uh, we're sitting at 3.2%. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you can begin to start saying, what about employment, the direct contribution of tourism to, to employment, we're sitting at 4.6%. And yes, we are not at the level at uh, what the mining sector is, is, is contributing, but as I said, we are a growing sector. And um, when we look at uh, from what we call uh, um, the benefit from investment point of view, a lot of people don't look at our industry from a, a foreign exchange earning point of view. We're a major contributor to foreign earnings for any particular country. In the case of South Africa, uh, our foreign earnings contribution to our economy sits at 10 one percent yeah okay and and from an investment point of view we're sitting at 0.8.3 percent of investment so we know small fry as an industry in the South African okay context. so the figures you've laid out very encouraging let's uh, break it down even further how much of that investment that's getting made is government driven and government initiative that's coming to the fore and how much of it private sector is the private sector starting to see the opportunity that it can start to uh, derive benefit from a lot of the investment that we're looking at it here, uh, Alicia, is really private sector driven. And what does it translate into? We're talking about uh, the, the new hotels that you see that have been put in place. Uh, we're looking at coaches that uh, the private sector is investing and buying to add to the fleet that we have uh, to contribute to the visitor experience in South Africa. We look at things like, for instance, uh, you know, the investment that goes into the airline industry. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about uh, uh, the portion that government is really contributing, I think you will then look from a South African point of view, the likes of SAA, the kind of investment that will go into to recapitalizing SAA, for instance. But largely, a lot of it is really private sector driven. Okay, so we're all optimistic and we're looking at the positive side of things. On the flip side, what are some of the challenges that persist acting as hindrances to the growth of the sector? Our biggest challenges, and we've been parting it, we've been saying it for years to, years now, and I'll really start with the primary ones. And the primary ones has to do with the, the, move, uh, the movement of people. That is the biggest challenge. We're talking visas. Whether it's visas, uh, whether it's taxes, uh, it is the biggest challenge that we're facing as a sector here in South Africa. I know it is a challenge that is faced in other parts of the world, like India and also in the UK. And, and, and let me make it very simple. What do I mean? Because when you say visas, we think everybody knows what it is. The fact that as a country, we require other citizens from other countries to come to our country and to pay for that service. It is one of the things that makes people to think twice if they want to visit our, our shores. Secondly, the taxes. And I don't know how many people look at their ticket when their uh, airline ticket gets issued to them. There's some serious taxes that goes into your airline ticket. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the price for you to actually get into that airplane and sit, take that seat, compared to the other added charges that goes into that price ticket, a lot of it you find that the price for you to be sit for the seat is actually less than what it costs you. All these taxes that are added. It's for you one as a thing consumer. you are voicing this out loud in uh, you know in this kind of conversation. Uh, to what extent is government paying attention, and to what extent are we? Seeing shifts in that regulatory framework? I think uh, one of the things we really need to take back as an industry is that, uh, and this is what I said earlier on, we as an industry need to really take up 
the challenge of educating government and government officials across the world about our industry. The kind of policies, when they pass on policies, for them to begin to understand when they pass a particular policy, have they checked all the sectors where this, the, the influence could be, the effect can be felt. And one of those things that get touched on by a lot of policies that get passed on to alleviate a problem in a particular sector is us. So when government passes, for instance, I'll give you an example of the impact uh, and the reason why we then need to reach out as a sector so to make sure we get heard, is that when the South African government faced with the problem of getting a lot more people illegally you know, smuggled into South Africa and then uh, transited to other countries. Mm -hmm. The response for South Africa and for any government for that matter was to put transit visas. So if you are coming and you're traveling through South Africa to another country, nowadays you have been required to get a visa, whereas you were not supposed to get it in the past. Now when that happened, it was stopping a problem, but it affected us as an industry. Mm -hmm. So now Alicia who's coming to South Africa, traveling through South Africa, going to Zambia or going to Cairo, suddenly she has to, she has to pay a visa to be able to travel to South Africa and she just decided, I'm not going through South Africa anymore. I'm going to go fly Nairobi. How open is the government to these kind of cons uh, conversations? How receptive are they? Do you uh, are they? Do you see collaboration happening? We are. I think. Uh, I think it's just us as an industry. We must make our message very coherent. We must, you know, get all the facts and figures because. If things don't make sense from a facts and figures point of view, no one is going to listen to you on, on that one. So our government, really, they are very receptive when we do speak to them about these issues. And we have a minister who's very committed. We have a meeting with our minister twice a year as a private sector. And when we raise these issues, whether it's a liquor act that gets passed on from one province to the other, or whether it's the issue of mobility, the fuel taxes, and the airport taxes, the minister takes up this issue within cabinet. What we do need is our minister need to be able to have the rest of cabinet understanding the impact of their actions to the, our industry. All of this uh, will be moves initiated in order to cater to the demand that's out there. Just how successfully has the industry been able to leverage off the exposure gained from South Africa's ex uh, ex exhibition and hosting of the 2010 FIFA Soccer World Cup? Oh, it's been wonderful. I, if you have a look, let's just look at uh, the amount of, of investment that has gone into this country after, before and, 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 and after the World Cup. Let's also look at the, 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 the spread of South Africa's brands into the rest of the continent. You know, so so really, the, the, you, you, we, it's not something we talk about a lot, but we as it as as, uh, right, as the CEO of the TBCSA, I see what my members are doing. They're very active in West Africa. There are a lot of them who had never had the courage to be able to get out as a South African brand to explore opportunities in the rest of the continent and other parts of the world. I'm seeing a lot of them doing that. And for me, it really comes out of them uh, knowing that they're coming from a country that is well received globally. And we have proven to the world that we get the infrastructure, we have the know-how, and for that matter, if we arrive in their shores, we have been received well, well because of what we can contribute.